over to the gate. Cam's going to have a more difficult entry. There she goes. Point again. Oh, see the high float here, guys. Puffed up, tarwag. I think Zena's actually going to do a hipper jaw slap combo. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, guys? You ever wondered what sound crocs make? That's it. <laughs> low rumbling growls. They can cough a little bit. Sort of a low rumbling cough. They can modulate the frequencies. I hear people say they sound like dogs. Or someone was even told the other day that they sound like cattle. They do not. <laughs> That is what they sound like. Almost ready to start here. <laughs> nice jaw slap. Ooh, everyone's. You coming back over? Whoop! Madonna sneaking in on the side here. Nice. Come away. You're making. You've been a nuisance today. Oh. Yeah, this is a male. Zena will back off. You see, they get nervous. Yeah, male crocs guys aren't. You know, they're not really new age sensitive types. You'd like to use. You know. Talk about their feelings and hold hands and stuff. They usually make their point quite bluntly. Someone can just reach in and show them where it is. They're a little bit warm, but not too hot. Yeah, good crocodile feeding weather. They like it when it's like this, these sort of changeover periods, September, October, April, May. This is when I find they are most active. So I'd like to welcome you here today. My name's Drew. I should have a, I will have an assistant come down. His name's Cameron. Cam's gonna jump in here. Um, and he'll feed the crocs in there. Well, oh, Madonna's oh, yeah. making a point now. We'll feed them up. Pretty hungry today. Cam might even get out of the cage if we can get Psycho out of the road. We might go out here a little bit and feed as well. We'll learn a little bit about them, and they are indeed interesting characters. That's for sure. And, of course, you do find them locally, even some large ones. And people have had some poor outcomes with them, of course. <laughs> Once we've looked at this crew here, and these of course are what we call estuarine or saltwater crocodiles, we'll go and look at the Australian freshwater or Johnston crocodile and get a bit of an understanding about that. You'll make your 1145 boat. If you're doing the freshy feeding, you'll do that after I've done the talk. But what I'll do now, I'll chuck a little bit of food out. We've got quite a few crocodiles today. Look at you, munchie. Oh, friggin' hell. So what we have in here, guys, these are the estuarine or saltwater crocodiles. Fascinating species indeed. Individual males attaining lengths of over six metres. Probably the biggest reptiles on this planet in this day and age. Indigenous to Australia, which means you do get them here, but they are found elsewhere. Uh, they've got a huge distribution. They go all the way from Australia to India, all through that Pacific Asiatic region. Very effective conservation strategies here in Australia. Fairly huge areas of habitat, fairly oh, intact. And not so many people there and we have a really secure population of this of this species there's no need to worry about them in terms of their conservation status in here guys we've got 23 of them there are 20 females chuck one of those kids in and cut my talking time we'll all get the idea this is cameron guys he's come down he's going to help me today he's just going to grab that bucket there guys so cameron's got again lucky psychos come right down here so today is an easy entry no problem, mate. No problem today. Usually she's right in front of that gate, guys, but today... Actually, I might even get you to feed her as soon as you jump in, Cameron. It's always exciting. Here, right here, mate. I'd hustle if I was you, because you can see she's sort of uh, thinking about coming over. It's got that look about it. So feed her straight up. She's always a fun croc to feed. Oh, look out. You'll be right, mate. Feed her up, Cam. Get a small piece of food out and give her a little bit. Cameron will feed this croc here. Yeah, mate, outside, yeah. Hell yeah, people want their money's worth. <laughs> well, I please be careful. Looks like a lot of paperwork. Oh, nice. Nice, I do. Some of them are units, though, guys. I mean, they're big animals. Some of them would be approaching maximum sort of size for females, like ones like Xena here would be at 3.2 metres for sure, but Madonna wouldn't be far off, and if not exact, Psycho would be over 3 metres. Much here, of course, is very, very large as well. Right, so they are very large females indeed. We do know some of them, of course. 
Now, like I was saying, some of these females are quite large in here. We do know some of them, they're regular feeders. They come over all the time, we can recognise them. There are three males in here. They're all sub-adult. The human equivalent of sub-adult is, of course, teenager. And that's what we've got in here. We don't have a real big adult male. We used to. We used to have one. Um, he, did, he actually grew up with these females. He's a fantastic crocodile. Probably my second favourite crocodile. His name was Spartacus. Uh, the problem with Spartacus, I think he took his name a bit too seriously, and he started attacking the female crocodiles. And the first thing he did, he actually tore the front leg, we couldn't believe it, tore the front leg off one of the ones out here. Clean off. She survived. Oh, you may even see her. She's actually in the main lagoon where you do your boat ride. If you do see her, just so you know, her name is Eileen. I don't name the crocs, right? Tacky, I know. And then he killed one, and he actually killed a female. So he was done, guys. So we took him out, but because he's such a good-looking croc with a great sort of personality, we put him on display. So he's in the, over there next to Zon on his own, where he can think about what he did. <laughs> Which, of course, having no premeditation, conscience, or empathy, he will not. So now we have three sub-adult males. And the interesting thing about those males is they're wild caught, and I mean locally, like within 20k, 30k, 40k of Hartley's Crocodile Adventures, these guys have been caught. So in here, on my left here, second largest of them is this fella here. 3.6 metres long, big enough to be dangerous indeed. His name is Snappy Tom. <laughs> And Snappy Tom, guys, was trapped in 2015 in Tomatis Creek. So when you drive from Cairns, first river is the Barren, second one about two, three kilometres down the Cook Highway is Tomatis Creek. So right there next to Cairns. Now, he did nothing wrong. He's just swimming around, sunbaking, freaking people out. He didn't actually do anything, but he was trapped and brought here. There are not supposed to be any crocs in that creek for management purposes. The smallest of the males in here, well, he was just here, but he looks like he's gone away somewhere. Here he is here, this little guy here. Got a bit of a punch, this fella, too. This guy's 3.4 metres long. That's Norman. And Norman, guys, came from Yarrabar, I believe. That's the other side of the Cairns Inlet there. And Normie was doing something a little bit bad. What Normie was doing is he was eating some of the local dogs. <laughs> So that does, uh, you know, that gets you in trouble. And the largest of the crocodiles in here, and our most recent acquisition, is this guy here. Right here, guys. You can see him here. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I'm in trouble. Oh. 3.9 metres. <laughs> 3.9 metres. This, guys, is Douglas. Would any holiday goers like to hazard a guess where Douglas may have come from? <laughs> That's right, Dougie's from Port Douglas. <laughs> and he was brought to us in May in 2016, guys. And what Dougie did, Dougie jumped out of the water, had a fair dinkum shot at a golf on the Sheridan Marath Golf Course. <laughs> yeah. Now, lucky for everyone, especially Dougie, Dougie missed. He was very quickly brought here and he settled in very nicely. I have also noticed here, guys, on my right, out here, guys, we have Hartley's bravest bird. Can you see him here? This is Eddie the egret. <laughs> He's an intermediate egret. You see him there? Bright white bird, exactly like the chickens I feed out, <laughs> wading around in the water where it's full of crocodiles. I'm surprised Eddie is still with us. Please be careful, Eddie. I hope you've done a risk assessment. <laughs> and he comes here to scavenge the crocodile food, of course. What are you doing, Madonna? So, with Douglas here, guys. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, man. We're on a roll today. Zena's actually, zena has been pretty full on today, Cam. Making trouble. He's in a mood, mate. What are you doing, Munch? Don't do it, man. Don't do it. An interesting thing with Douglas here, guys, about one month after we got him, Douglas here, don't do it, Dougie. Don't do it, oh don't do it buddy. <laughs> interesting thing here with Douglas, guys, about one month after we got Dougie, what Dougie did is he regurgitated 
That's the scientific term for chucked up. A crab pot. Oh yeah. Custom made one too, not one bought in the shop. So we put a picture in the local paper because it was a bit interesting and some a guy from um, Newell Beach, that's north of Cairns, uh, north of Port Douglas, rang up and said, that's my crab pot. Uh, so just so we understand a little bit about saltwater crocs, they can live in salt water for very long periods of time, perhaps permanently. They have lots of adaptations that facilitate this, but the major one is Dougie here has modified salivary glands on his tongue that are now what we call salt excreting glands. So as the salt builds up, mainly through osmosis, you know, seeping in through the skin, not so much from drinking it, he can get rid of it, live out there for months and months and months. Uh, they love to travel. I read about a crocodile that swam 940 kilometres from the tip of Cape York down into the Gulf in 80 days. Some days he was doing 20k a day. There's another one I read about, went out to the Coral Sea, turned up on an island, they'd never seen crops before. The people that live there. And to get there, he must have swum at least 1,400 kilometres. Like out in the middle of the ocean. Keeping in mind, I strongly suspect that crocodile is what we call in scientific terms, friggin' lost. But that's what they're like, right? So Dougie's come along the coastline, he's gone into Saltwater Creek, He's probably felt the crabs in the pot. He's tried to get them out probably, but in the end, in true crocodile fashion, he's gone stuffed this, eaten the whole pot. <laughs> Continued swimming, probably because there's, I think there's a big male in Saltwater Creek, so it's probably pushed him back out. He's gone along the coastline. He's come in Dixon's Inlet. That's at Port Douglas, right? So everyone be there having their meals and on the inlet and stuff and at the marina. Dougie would have cruised past at night and gone down in there and set up house down there. And then of course he did jump out and have a go at someone, so he was trapped and brought here. <laughs> Let's feed a few crocs, Cam. You might, um, can you get outside or a psycho going to make it hard for you? <laughs> Tuck it in tight, see if you can get around to one of these females. If you can't, you can't, but bring her in real tight on the cage there. I'm on speedy. Top, top. Crocs everywhere. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that ain't gonna work, dude. No, no indeed. What do we got here? All right, how about you? Use you got a bit of go on you. Now, with the crocodiles here, in terms of their ancestry, they are indeed said to be reptiles. I'm put in this group because of features that they share in common with other critters like this, external and internal structural features like, say, scales, ectothermy. But to tell you the truth, guys, who would have thought they actually share a common ancestry with Eddie, the egret, more so than snakes, lizards, turtles or chuataras. This early lizard-like critters that gave rise to dinosaurs gave rise to these animals as well. Crocodile-like reptiles were super common in the age of the reptiles, as common as dinosaurs. This crocodile I can verify is about six and a half metres. It's based on a skull from India, now sitting in the British Museum. And that's the same size as this boat, including the engine right at the back.
This is enough food, ladies and gentlemen, for one of these animals for three days, four days. So if they get that eight or nine times a day as they have been over school holiday periods, what, does it, what, what, is, what, what happens to them? Yeah, but yeah, they get overfed. In the winter time, of course, they can't metabolise it, they get sick. A chicken a week each is truckloads for these things and they already have far more than that. Any of the eggs are laid anywhere here in the park, they're all gathered up. They go back to the farm, which is next door, and they form part of the stock over there. We get them out of here before anything happens to them, because if the baby crocs hatch in here, they just get eaten by everything else. He's like, nah, mate, I ain't got beef for you. That is mad. It just looks like part of the tree. That was quite cool, but a nerve wracking experience. It was a little bit scary. Yeah. Get to uh, walk across the middle so that some birds that were like attacking <laughs> each other didn't get us. Didn't get us, yeah, so that wasn't very nice. Does that make sense at all? 